so you guys are clean good speakers now. You've been ordained, knighted, or whatever the process is. <laughs> So, my hope is you're going to take the language with you everywhere you go. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> so uh, we've got today and Thursday, and those are our last two classes. And then next Tuesday, I just want to hear your guys' ideas on where you're going to take the language. It could be as fancy or unfancy as you want it to be. We've all done enough work. Everybody is doing just fine. Everybody you did your dialogue assignments for your midterm. They were rich and complex and amazing. We've been drilling through a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, you guys get to be crowned as full on intermediate or above speakers. We need crowns. Oh, right. <laughs> Let's mine have to bring the crowns. Let's bring the crowns. <laughs> <laughs> there was a student who did a midterm presentation using a paper Burger King crown, <laughs> which was amazing. Um, yeah, right? And so they might be paper crowns, but we'll, we'll do what we can. Uh, at some point, we will have some more sort of formal recognition for people who are going up levels as speakers. And so we've been talking about that with some different uh, groups who are involved with uh, planning things and, and thinking about the bigger picture, which is, I think you've, you've got some work to do with indigenous languages to consciously increase the status of the language and its speakers. And I think on a day-to-day -day basis, like we know who's showing up and doing the work and grinding and, and speaking and listening and trying, but we want other people to, to see that as well. Uh, anyways, let's see what else. I think it was snowing earlier today. It doesn't look like it now. We had a nice little flurry. I thought spring was over and winter was going to turn back over, but maybe not. Uh, it's probably because my sister was crying around that it was snowing in Anchorage and I used the laughing emoji on it. So probably, this is probably my little hutchpot moment. I will own it. Uh, so... Anybody have any thoughts, something to share, ideas, questions? I've been looking at the Shinket Domain Reclamation Project and having some ideas. And the thing that I'm not sure about is how much involvement of non Shinket speakers should be. I mean, I, I, of course, would love it if I could get other people to try. Um, but the, the project itself might just be with a couple of other people who are think it learners, mm -hmm. just sort of doing it in public. <laughs> yeah, and, and whenever you're kind of planning stuff like this, it's always a question. Like, are you trying to increase the visibility and the resources of the people in the group, or are you trying to get more people into the group? 
And that's always, it's a balancing act. And I don't think you have to pick one or the other. Okay. Uh, well, I, I don't think you have to only do one or the other. Mm -hmm. You kind of do have to have a focus. Like this is mm -hmm. for, uh, and, and that's something to probably keep in mind is who's your target group. Uh, and then I think you, for me, I would start with the folks who already know a lot and then you give them the tools and then you go and get some more people. So that's, that could be a strategy, but there's, there's different people who come at this from different angles in terms of how to bring the language back. And, and one of the things that you, you do try to do is you bring it back into a living sort of breathing thing. Cause one of your sort of projects could be, okay. And, and I saw, um, Yacht. His name is Peter Stanton, and he did a project uh, where he said, here's 10 words that we could just replace. There's 10 English words that we don't have to use in Clinkett country ever. And so it could be a project like that. And so, and I'm not saying you have to go and do this, but all you got to do sh is share next week an idea and then how you think it could be carried out. Um, and then my hope is you're, you're going to go do it. Mm. And then... Uh, I'm going to collect everybody's addresses and stuff, and I'll be sending out some. We're going to make, I'm going to make the verb cards, I think, into a book. Sorry, I, didn't, I couldn't figure it out. I got grumpy at a company because they wouldn't write me back. And, um, but I'll figure out how to get those to you so you have those verbs uh, conjugated. The other thing I think that will be there, it's going to be like a verb smash handbook, and it's going to have like those conjugated verbs for you and then some of the cheat sheets. Like, Okay. Uh, I know we've talked a little bit about uh, stem variation and some other stuff, and I want to show you guys something real quick and then see if anybody else has any other thoughts. Hold on a second. So, oh, let's get that one to go. So, in Hausane one of the things that's in here. That would be good for you to uh, just take a look at would be this section on verb modes. So we call them a mode. Uh, in uh, other languages, it might be called a tense. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with calling it tense, like past tense, present tense. We tend to use mode uh, because it's not really time driven. And so as you go through here, this chapter. It talks about the five different types of clinket verbs. An act for someone to do something. An event for something to happen. A state for something to be a certain way. A motion for something to move. And a position for something to be positioned somewhere. There are not very many position verbs at all. But the one interesting thing about position verbs they should only be able to use, be used in the imperfective or negative imperfective. I'm standing here, I'm not standing here. I'm sitting here, I'm not sitting here. You can't say, I'm going to sit here. Then you're going to switch to a different, it's got to be a different type of verb. So then it goes through and it talks about what these, what these sort of things mean. And then it shows you these themes of the verbs that are going to be the samples going through. And it's going to put all of these different verbs into all of these different modes throughout here. And so what I tried to do is pick uh, four verbs from each of these verb types. Uh, one that's a, uh, and what I tried to do is pick ones and put different uh, verb a thematic prefix on there so you could see what it looks like when the thematic prefix is on there. Uh, and then you go through and it'll show you like an imperfective, and then these are the things, if there's an object, it'll be there. If there's a subject, it'll be there. Uh, the classifier and the root, and this one is unpredictable. You just have to learn the imperfective and kind of, as far as we could tell, there's like 20 different ways that it can go. And so the stem variation is the unpredictable part. The only ones that can have imperfectives are acts and states. An act verb will always be minus i. A state will always be plus i. So that's yake, chitzin, yanik. You know a bunch of these already, right? Uh, and so 
we think of the plus i because if it's going to be that way, it must be that way. So that's why it's plus i. Act means it's happening now, which means it's not, it's not that way yet. It hasn't been sort of brought to completion. Then it will show you examples of those uh, if they have them. Not all those verbs have imperfectives. Then you go through and it'll show you the negative imperfective, place. Uh, and this will show you what kinds of things needs to pop up in the pre-verb, what kinds of things need to appear in the prefix, and then uh, whether or not the conjugation prefix pops up, the, what the classifier is doing, what the stem variation is doing, and if there's any suffixes. So you can read through this sort of thing. And what I'd probably have in, in a little verb cheat sheet be basically this, although maybe a scaled down version of it. Uh, when you get to ones like the perfective, uh, so here's the things that we talked this about. Is good. The stem variation um, and what it's going to look like. And then here, though, it's going to show you uh, without a thematic prefix, this is what your, this is what your your prefixes will look like, right? So you're going to have chwa, chwase, chwase, chwase. We did that. We drilled all those. Watuwa, watuse, watuse, watuse. And so, and it goes through, and then I'll have the plus D versions after here. And so it, it shows you. So if you know the classifier, you can actually look right here and grab that prefix while you're still learning how to put it together yourself, right? And then you, you look up here for the stem variation, and then you should know what the stem is doing to attach it onto there. Uh, same with the future. The future has that. Uh, so there are a couple things to note uh, when we look at the future, which we'll do probably this week. I think we'll just sort of move on from the perfective. There's a bunch of stuff we might not feel like we've mastered, but the chapter's here, the examples are here. I'll put the entire slideshow up on our web page so you could just keep looking at it, guess, and, and see. And you'll, you'll find that the more you try it, and, and sometimes you got to just do some of this kind of, it's sort of along a number crunching type of realm. So you just sort of say, okay, I did it. Then you're going to say, hua, whatever, right? Uh, and then, uh, so for the future, there's going to be a couple other sort of things. At the end of this chapter is a chart that shows you the stem variation for all of the different verb modes. Uh, this is uh, adapted from Carrie Eggleston's dissertation. It's a wonderful resource to have. Uh, and so it's complicated to look at, but the C is a consonant, the B is a vowel. There's open, uh, so you have open roots, closed roots, you have zero and everything else because the zeros will be different than the other things. And so those are just things to kind of, to keep in mind. So this, you, as you look up and you want to start learning how to use these things more, because what you start doing in Klinka is you start learning how these other verb modes work. What if I want to say, I do that regularly. I do that all the time. I used to do that. Um, they used to be called this. That's all sort of, un it's coded in here. But so that's more along the process side. The other side is just reading Clinkit, listening to Clinkit, speaking Clinkit, and just sort of, sometimes I think you got to actively think about the the structure, and sometimes you just got to leave it alone and just go engage in the language. But I think by doing those two things regularly, you'll find that they do complement each other. Because pretty soon you'll be talking about, oh yeah, I know how to say that now. Or you'll hear something like, oh yeah, I know how to interpret that now. So, but if you lean too heavy in one direction, uh, you could know all the structural stuff, but you can't talk, which I've seen plenty of. Or you can talk, but then you, you get stuck and you don't know how to move those verbs into these other sort of realms. Any thoughts? Any things on your mind? Questions? You have given us <clears throat> many, many resources. And I remember one time, like years ago, I said, if you know, people are always saying, we need more curriculum, I said, if we just learned what's out there, we'd all be proficient. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of resources already. Yeah, and, and there's a bunch of stuff that I, I don't think uh, we're using 
that much. So if you want to practice, I kind of sprung this on my class uh, last night. Although sometimes I do this thing where I'll, we're about halfway through a class. I was like, hey, it'd be a good idea if we did this. And then I'll kind of forget about it. Like, hey, remember I said we should do this? So I kind of had one of those moments uh, yesterday. But there are these uh, texts that were made. Uh, and, the, and the stuff that I do really just tries to build upon what's been done before and really try to incorporate that stuff and just keep the momentum going. Mm -hmm. So these, this is a book called Clinkett Short Stories. Mm -hmm. uh, these, this one and several others, uh, you could find, well, I'm trying to do two things at once, using a link off of the Clinkett Oral Literature page. And I'll put this on our intermediate Clinkett page as well. And I think it's mm -hmm. called like, old text or, or something like that. Mm -hmm. but these are uh, really amazing. These are really amazing. So these were done at Sheldon Jackson College. Uh, and they're these little short stories that are not translated. Mm -hmm. So the nice part, the really nice part, is the clinket is written. Mm -hmm. Because if you have to write the clinket yourself, mm -hmm. that's, a, that's another huge step. And, and you, I think you should get there. Uh, but without the audio, you sort of look at this, and, mm -hmm. and we were looking at this. Anybody want to read this first sentence for us? Anybody? Okay. Sheesh. You guys might say kum. I'm pretty sure you would say kum. I don't know if you'd say uda kumjin, uh, but you might. There, there's a couple, like we would probably write this vowel as just a U and this one as just an I right now. And it's not a right or wrong thing at all. It's just, that's just kind of how we've shifted these days. Long time ago. Long time ago. Not a blanket. There's a blanket. A woman blanket. Yeah, clinket women. So uh, Shah okay. is the plural version. Clinket women blanket. Has uda kudenching. So then we do a little bit of uh, work here. Not doing a very good job of navigating. Is the gene on the end, is that it happens, it always happens that way? When you have the gene at the end, uh, you should have, you should expect it used to always happen. Oh. Right, so things that end with gin, uh, not all the time, but a lot of times you're going to get that decessive suffix on there, and that means it doesn't happen anymore, just like you desagen. Um, I didn't know that, but now I do, right? Uh, so if we look up that, um, oh, you okay. So we're going to look up that kujin, right? So ku, it's blanket is what we should expect for the verb root, right? And so wherever my is perfect. <laughs> So we're going to look up in the Nash Story Dictionary, ku. So here's uh, ku to wear a blanket. It doesn't have the W on there, but let's see if there's something under, <laughs> since they underwear by then. <laughs> so here, uh, Oh, that's interesting. So it's to put a blanket on. It's to wear a blanket, right? And so you'll find this also in, uh, in Jeff Lear's stuff. So the other thing is getting comfortable with sort of going to the verb dictionary, going to Carrie's website, and then going to Lear's verb notes, because we looked this one up last night. So it, 
the W could be there at the end. It'd be interesting to see in Teslin whether Teslin speakers would say would uh, uh, and whether you're going to hear that M on there, uh, and especially if we put like a suffix on there. So the W might be there. It might not be there. Uh, we certainly see it here. So would is to put a blanket on or to wear a blanket. So then we go back to this and we say, uh, long time ago, clinket women used to wear a blanket. Right? And so now we can go, and you could go on and on. And so this is kind of a, a good exercise because, you know, the clinket is there. Uh, there's probably pretty complex stuff in here, but not full on super duper hard stuff. Like sometimes you're going to get with the Cyril George exercise, <laughs> for example. But uh, this is out there, and so if you're looking for it, there's no shortage of stuff to do. But every time we hit the spring, I'll tell students, give yourself stuff to do, give yourself stuff to do, because next thing you know, fall will be here, and you'll be like, yeah, yes, this is just a little bit harder than it was, mm -hmm. you know, because it's nice. You could take your breaks, but not for very long. Other thoughts? Oh, Teach, I guess, has some stuff to share. Look. What here? Teach also good. Oh, you're asking. Oh, uh, 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 ah. Ah, you did the dark dark on your key. Uh, sentences uh, yeah if you have them now you could say them if you want to do it Thursday you could if anybody else has them you could okay. ask. I just didn't know if there was one day we were, like if we decided we were doing it Thursday because I know we did them on Thursday last week we were doing them Tuesday which is today <laughs> but it's kind of it's the last week too so if you have them cool if you don't cool I was telling people, they came to me and they said, we're making a mural in this teen center and we would like to write, school is cool. Translate that for us. I said, no. Why don't we put something in there that's like, that's a clinket thing instead of just trying to translate. Like, I don't even know how to say it. Like, shkunayaseat. Is that what I'm trying to say? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> fix the heat. It's cold in here. <laughs> you can say, you can say something like that. School is a good thing. But it's always an interesting thing. And we want the language. And so this is related to our final project, is we want the language to be out there. But sometimes we want to say, OK, yeah, let's, let's give them that concept. But sometimes we want to say, oh, let's Let's put something from the clinket way of thinking out there, and then you could, you guys could translate that into English. And so, it's and it's it's just a play it by ear type of thing. That was actually a comment from one of the elders that doing that. It wasn't that she didn't like it, but she was commenting on that that it was just translating mm -hmm. English using clinket words. <coughs> But then she was trying to convey but that same idea that that's not really how we think. Mm. And I think it can be fun. And we can have fun. And I don't want to poo-poo on everything. Uh, but sometimes if the concept is really, if, you know, people say, I've got these values like integrity. And, you know, they'll just have these one word things that work really well in English. And I'll say, oh, that's great. But can we just have a just a side by side to saying, oh, here's some clinket values in our language that we don't have to, you know. Mm -hmm. And this happens all the time. We're always translating themes, even for indigenous organizations. They like, translate this theme, and sometimes the theme sounds really nice in English, but it also comes from an English way of thinking. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Other thoughts, questions, things that will help before we walk away from this semester.
Gast ech, um, jak jikt, um, gast ech, jeje gane jak jikt, ge, um, ja jik i, uh, wit tas, um, awat ach, awat ach jik tas, ge, um, gachut, gachut, wit tas, ge, Tus klein, Hossitin, Tus klein, um, uh, uh, Wuti, um, a cut, a cut, Uchiach, a tark, a tark, glad yach, yeti, um, Tus klein, Klikuzi, um, Yidadi day, um, ya tuch ka glet ya ya ti tus klet khos khosetin um ka um ach ach tuasi gu akhwa yikh akhwa wus um wasa du sak ya tus um stringet sai um to you okay Um, who's, who's clean again? Clean. A cut, a cut. A cut, a cut. A talk. Um, a cut, 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 a Hot a um, work cook cut. Oh, hey, was a coo just two sayah was a coo. Question had there a cock cook was she one canines go away yeast at her only hunk a ya work up a hint hug at the gray two plain. Yai, a ya ye do a sago at just yai, tadaka yai so we seat ko a ye do a sock way, a glekach in a way humpback, plate yai, a ya beluga, one canins ye sai a ya, would tickle ye, ya ye set with two satin, ha. Das away, was a ye gach to sa, wait a. A car away. But we think it you at the atki. Think it rena you at the atki has a woos a da. Nisaku again. Salmon shark. You had to a sock. Oh, how? She go at the gay. Dasa. Goes away iPhone. <laughs> Take a picture. Yeah, we qua. Cheers. It's a cool gateway. Jeff Lear, Weha, Kayesh Kuni, the Yajini, 
Akakakwashi we Tekakinach Shar Chich Uweya Asam Shakhtak Akwasaku we that that Akudakai was to <laughs> sugar at the we salmon shark, ha dogfish, crushed chocolate at. Ianaka Katka Ah to sugar at the gay Katka Yadu Yet again Echosaku Was ye? The cheese. Did that call Sukka? Chuckle that? Does I eat two woods? Kaka ye aye 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 Kachutana <laughs> Kakit Kailadin Lach Tlachnet Tlachnet Tzitk Yuk Kek Kek Hosatin Kawe Kiatil Katsha Zuk Hosatin Ach nilte ye kadakit. Agai kadak itne ye kah ye satin so. Nice day, gach to art. Yeah, well, it was. Cheese, how we? Okay, ha, okay. So, okay. Ah, ah, come. Hak, it, I, ya. Wa, ya, tea, yak. Yah kuha ye do a sah. 
Tach ani dach wududlitsu. Ye yagi ye ple dach wusitan kak. Kadask dach wusitan kaa kaka hing dach wusitan. Ah, here yach yati. Ach awe tak iti ye duasak. Gunastis. Okay. Gunastis. Wanganate's key. Kachu tan was a tea. Whoa. Oh. Whoa. Could see. I can't hear good as cheese. Yeah, what? Tan is their toy. Yeah, why? He's trying to touch his coat yet. Yeah, why has to yet? He has to. He has out the tour for a day or two. Yeah, we turn it off. Hey, what's up? When can you do this? We could see now. Out the shot. Ah, now I ask you to get. Hey, the hint now. Next day, how good? I had to see the connect away at the end. خانت آیا خواهد گفت دسته دا اینه خستین و کوت اینه که خنخ و وچک این یه او آخ آخ آیا خواست نو کدوشی و کوت این دو این که خنی گوگ دخنی شیخ دخنی شیخ خنخ و شیخ قاضی دخ دست خواه دخ خود شان و شویس قا خنخ او خا Cut way coots in Hadushi our jockey at. Yeah, away, douche, got sneak. Okay. Okay. You in a get cachonic. Wait at that. Yeah, take a. Play the hina way way. Kagak to up. We cook kashuk kuku aya wutu se yeh. Ya shakshani kakahuan ish in. Kaho nah ye ke has do yu katangi a da. Yah kuha. Ye away ye do a saga at. The cut talk. Atu nah da hoon. Yah kuha kut za tea. Could you make it a little bit bigger? Oh, yeah, oh, well. Check what I'll try to do it now. Gunash Chish. Ah. One can is cut a cock when he is here, okay? The cut talk. Aku a has to turn the tani ye ye ti. Talk all year. Talk talk every year. The cut ye gi all day. Talk ye gi er day. Is that how you supposed to say? So what? Talk. Okay. Talk. A tu nach da un. Yeah, how could it be? What? The cut. No, that's one where it probably could go either way, because you're saying all year or every year, right? I don't, I don't know. But that's that's how I remember him saying it. Talk, talk, eat, kutan, yes, yes, do a sock. There's a couple things to keep in mind here. Is talk, eat, that one's not. Quite universal. Mm -hmm. I would say dakha. They probably have a different way of saying it. For some reason, uh, when I would work with them, they could ne they would always have a hard time remembering spring. Mm 
And so it's something worth keeping in mind. There's this other thing where sometimes, uh, I think it's fine for non-human things to be hus, right? It's just pluralizing anything. So that's the hus contracted right there. Uh, it's the same. They're the same. They come in the same order is what that's really saying. They're always going in the same order. Uh, and so the winter is cold. So here, you're going to get that locative to say in the winter. And then if you're going to talk about some sort of thing that always happens, you're going to get that ch you know, on the end, right? So you could say winters used to be cold. So you could make that switch to it's always that way to it always used to be that way by adding the jin on there. That's, it's a pretty straightforward uh, switch. Uh, we're going to build a snowman with snow. So I used to think snowman would be but then I was told it's It's the person that people made by packing snow. It's getting, it always gets warmer in the spring. So we see the on there. Ya kukat h. So then if, if we're going to put that repetitive suffix on there, it just, it does a little bit more work. These are, once you start getting into it, this thing always happens, you're going to have to do some extra work with those verbs. For now, you'll look up what we call the perfective habitual and put it on there. Uh, I, I always go there. I always, I always make coffee in the morning, right? Something that just happens. And then that CH we call habitual because it, it just, it just happens. That one was really fun. Um, <laughs> The flowers always blossom. So the word for flower means blossom. Right, that's the same thing. It, it comes from a verb, right? Back to the other one about kukat h. Um, ku is weather. Yep. Is that a noun that has the h on it, or is that a no. verb with it? H. -A. Ah. So, ah, whenever you close the double A or the double O, ah will become A. Double O, U will become way. So when you close them, they'll change their shape a little bit. Mm -hmm. Just that double A and that double O. The double E, like I said, ye na teach. Mm -hmm. It's always that way. But then sometimes you'll learn how to spot, because if you look up H, and you're like, okay, I'm not fine, you know, uh, you always find it. But then it, it's just something you'll learn to do through the context. You'll, you'll learn how to pull that stuff out. And sometimes when you close an open root, it'll change its shape a little bit. Uh, we know that verb. Mm -hmm. It's hot. Mm -hmm. This would be like, it's in the spring, it's, it always starts to get hot, is what I would sort of translate that. Good so add this chart. I'll put, I'll put these up. There's a whole bunch of fun ones. Um, this project was called like Tippy Tap. And um, <laughs> there, there's Tippy Tap is a, an app and you poke each word and it says the word for you. I don't know if we'll ever finish it because it's such a daunting project. The goal was to have 17 books translated into three different languages with all the audio. And it was just daunting. And some of them were a little silly. Like some of them, like, I was like, I don't want to do this. But there were actually some 
the best sentences that came out of here, and I'll just put this up so you guys could look at it. Uh, at the least, we're going to get some really good sentences out of it. Like these, talking about the seasons and what happens mm -hmm. in the seasons, I think is valuable. There's a really fun one about puppies that was really uh, neat. Uh, so the next one. Kutan, kunach, kuyachsat, ach. So this one, ach, is the root, and it means to radiate heat and to warm up other things. So that was really neat as, as they sort of, they both prefer this to talk about the summer heat, is that it just radiates and warms up everything. Uh, and so, kuyach, and so the when you get into these, uh, this is a few steps beyond the perfective in the future. It's learning how to put these together. But the first step is you just you look them up, right? And the ones that you're gonna you're gonna use, I think Akisha Wu Kerry she did a great job finding the most common verbs and then getting those conjugations in there. So you can look it up, and then you learn how to change that to like. I always do that. You always do that. And that's that's the next step. Uh, let's go to the beach. Ich de nach to art. Here comes another fun one. Yes, as kayani ye kakasush ach ye shakshakai. You know, they, they're always, the leaves fall, right? And they fall in a bunch because that's what the sus is doing. Yes, away one canines. Cooks a tar, cooks a arch. Sometimes uh, it's cold in the winter. Dakyak kohas away to a suku. So that was that's a fun one. I'll put that up so you guys can uh, have that, and I'll just keep trying to throw things uh, on that on our web web page as we approach summer. Yak air. Oh, is that? So I got a couple of things. I've got, unless you guys got any other questions or thoughts or things to share. Okay. So there's not a whole lot left on this one, but what I'm going to give you, there's some lists. And sometimes you just got to go through these lists and just start learning some of these things. You'll see some of these more than others. And so what this slideshow does is it shows you the suffixes that are there, what it looks like when you start putting them onto common things like ya, we, he, you. Ka and ya are very common things. In Clinket, ka is on or it's the horizontal surface. Ya is the face or the vertical surface. J is the hand or possession. Those ones are all over the place in Greek, and they have all kinds of different meanings to, you know, uh, you could be clapping your hands, or you could be slapping someone in the face. And so no. No. The way I taught my little brother, because I was being mean to him, I was like, I'm going to teach you some clinket. <laughs> and then I slapped, not real hard, but I slapped him in the face. And then he went like that. I was like, you're learning. But the ya on there is the face. Right. So here's one with a face. So we did this a while ago with ka, and this one you're gonna use, you're gonna see a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, ka dach or ka, it rolled off the table. That's where you're gonna use this one. Uh, ka de, it's gonna go over the top of it. And you say this one in a shengit kuih, gostana ayakak kijak, ye awe. So at a kuik, when they're killing the money, they'll name people and they'll say ka de. It's going to go over them. That's a process for killing the money in Shinge. Uh, and then ke de is when you're going to feed them, right? So it's a similar type of thing. Kanach or kanach to go over the top of, to go along the top of uh, something. Diskanach with jakain, wewasus, 
cow jumped over the moon, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so to do stuff like that, that's where you're going to use this one. Cut. Uh, it landed on it. It, it. it arrived on it. There's all kinds of things you could use this for. Shak, cut with chakak, which ak. The eagle landed on this piece of dry driftwood on the beach. Uh, kabu, you're probably not going to use that one a whole lot. But if someone says gusu, nadak kabu, you can answer gusu with kabu. Kuk or ka, you'll, you'll see those ones a lot, right? Ach ka le daku satan. It snowed on me, right? Ha, whatever. And then the, the ka would be just a on, on something. And kuk and ka, they tend to be kind of interchangeable. Kuk, you'll see that one, like it always snows on me. That's when you'd use the kuk, right? So it has to do with something moving along or repeatedly coming to. So we add these things to the ya, similar type of thing, but not as common. Uh, ya dach or ya, uh, a bird took off from the steep part of the mountain. That's called sha ya. When the mountain turns up to get really steep, it's called the face of the mountain. Ya de, towards the face of. Uh, I'm going to look at your face. I don't know why you tell someone, but you can warn them, right? Ya de ak kwashkain. Ya nach or ya nach. This one can also mean to go, like to drive past the store or to go past mm -hmm. someone's house, right? And so um, if we were all going to Shjak to her house for the viewing party, I might say, you're driving past her house, right? So that's, a, and yanach, it could also be sometimes um, just right in front of somebody's face, too. Get, arriving at the face of, yavu, gusu wei janwu, wei sha yavu. But you couldn't use sha yavu if there's other things in that sentence, especially verbs. Once you put a verb in there, that yabu and that kabu have to change to something else. Yach or ya, and then yach. Okay. Would you say it like on the, a person's face? Yeah. I might say, atcha iti e yabu. There's crumbs on your face. Uh -huh. Or, you know, something maybe there's. <laughs> Is that true for just those or all? Should there only be one verb in a sentence? No, there can be there can be multiple verbs. I'm just saying if there's any form of this tuwu, yawu, kawu, awu, it's more with that suffix wu. Like ya do, we do. Uh, so you say ya do ah, end of sentence. New sentence with a verb. Okay. Otherwise you're gonna switch it to ya. It's right here. So all I'm saying is when you have this suffix, w, uh, you tend to not have a verb in that sentence. So tu is, uh, and just ask questions if you got, because I'm... Are these in, um, are these in house snake? Yes, they, they should be in there. Uh, and then I'll also put this complete slideshow up uh, just so that you guys have it. And it's just, it's just to try and sort of push through some of these lists. Uh -huh. I think it's under the chapter on direction and location. Okay. Uh, so, to, and then some of these just have like special meaning, but now you'll see how these parts get put together to, to lead to these other things. Tuqa uh, is pleasant or pleasing. Um, and then there's different ways that you'll see this being used. When he felt like it was full enough, you'll have tuqa in there. Do tuqa awesh how khahik. When he felt he had filled it up full of solids enough, then he went and did the other thing, right? And so it's interesting how some of these things will be tied together. And um, what you'll see is you study some of these lists and then you go into the, the oratory, like the hashuka, and you just start looking for these. Right? And you'll start to learn how to spot them. Like, oh, this is one of those 
things that talks about the relationship between them. Uh, tu dach or tu tch. Could you go back to tuga and uh -huh. you had an example sentence, du tuga? You, yeah, you can say, or you can say, ach tu ka, ach or ach tu ka de ti. Huh. Um, ti. I was thankful. Okay. That's where I was grateful, and that's where that thing comes in. And so you'll see this in, a, in some different verbs. Uh, that, that's pleasing to me. Tu dach or tu from the inside of, uh, like a, a bird flies out of a hole or something. Tu um, day, going inside of something, usually a closed container or some sort of abstract thing. Tu nach, through the inside of something. Tut to be uh, located, uh, or let, you know, arrive at the inside. Tu wu is different than tu wu, but they probably are related concepts. So tu wu would be to be located inside of something. Tu wu, my spirit, my emotions, my intentions. Tu uh, located inside there, resting inside there, and then tu it keeps coming back in, or it's moving around. Okay, okay. Well, this time is always interesting. Okay, so now let's take a look at what these look like when you start using them. So one of the things is when you say ach ji wu. I have it, but that's not a, that just means it's located in my possession. Like that's how it works. And so what, in English, when you say I have, you use it for all kinds of stuff, right? I have a lot of skills, right? <laughs> but in Shingit, it's not always going to be ji wu, right? Like that's, it's just something that's in your possession, literally in your possession, or a boat, a car, uh, money. And it doesn't mean like it's in your hand. What's that? A cold? Would you say that for a cold? I probably wouldn't. I would just say, um, or I would say, uh, the cold grabbed me. But yeah, and so, but English does because you have, had, will have, you use that for a bunch of stuff in English, not all the time in Klinget, right? We tend to just sort of go into the verb instead. So this is like, um, it's not abstract things generally. It could be. It could be. Because you say, I've heard people say, And so, you, you put the time in my hand. Thank you for giving me the time. And I've heard fluent speakers say that. Uh, so it, it can work. Right? Yeah. But then when you go negative, kesh ach ji. So that suffix shouldn't be there. The wu should not be there. Right? Same with uh, if there's a person who's usually here, gusu hu. Kesh yat hu. Yadu hu. Kesh yat hu. That's how you tattle on the people who aren't coming to class. Gusu hu. Kesh yat hu. You heard it from me. Yeah, here's kesh yat. Right? Yadu Kashyat. So Achtisi. Kashyat. It's not here. So this shows you that wu. It, it's only there in the positive form. Once you put kesh, you shouldn't have that. And that's something I just hear people do. Kashachji wu. Kashachji. And that just that that suffix needs to go away. We do kesh wait. Okay, okay. Is it like, I mean, that u suffix, is it like in gusu? Is it's that exact same one. one? Okay. Gusu, yadu, we you just say goose. Me su. <laughs> goose. <laughs> Slash goose. <laughs> it's not a goose. Because 
Where? Goose is a female body. Uh -oh. We just have Goose. to make sure that it's well known by everybody because sometimes people will say that to about clouds. You cry. Okay. <laughs> yeah, they have to have the <laughs> S, the other S. Goose. Yes. Because yeah, my daughter, she, we're driving and she's like, she said goose and she's like, not this one, but the one that flies her. Uh -huh. So. <laughs> Okay, so neishu. Neishu would be located at home, right? Gosui ka neishu hu. Awu kesh a. Du yawu kesh du ya. Right? And so, but this only works, these concepts for like in terms of gusu, right? And answering that. Because otherwise you're going to use different, you know, you're going to want some different suffixes for other things. It's to say, um, He's working at home. So then once you put a verb on there, you're going to want a different type of suffix. This is showing you some examples of how it works. How do you say that one again? He's working at home. Um. Not working at home. So this again. He's working not at home. We're at home. You're at home with your siblings. Mom or dad comes home. Go sue that other one, right? And Kashnesh. Right, that's the tattletale mode again. Ah. Yeah, tattletale. Ah. But I'll tell you one more and then we'll take a break. Ah. Maybe I told you guys this one before. Hunakayaye ha wutiyan. Gwash. Ha. Yao sane, ya yak e ye at. Wasa has to sha an a ish us. Tay de hina we ko a, we yet duck yeast ta husatin. Ye away we gwail to ye a tea. We chips ye do a saga at. Sagu in ha e de a wakik. Aka away. The cock aya do in kahwanik. Gushi kesk aya kesach to washko ho away up. Kesach to washko do two yenik or dark. Just tetla auntin after was a good do in kayinik or a kesayaho tishing it costi tin. At ha kacha dasa yako iki a day yaki. Jahas do jiti tea ye a yanak yak e. Ye away do in a kawanik. One and is away yet, Connach yak e at ha. Hajit has our tea, ya ku e. Ah, ah, sha ye away. Has our see e, ha keys. Ye away, ah, dach a seek a hunt o' good. Ah, sha ye away, get in for her. Had he was thus away. Ah, shy. To a guess ago? Ah, could not away with two or ha. A ka away. Ta. Wush dach a ya. Has a wahash. Just a shoe a ya ha. A joy to take a walk. Yea, tea. A walk a ya cone a dach a ya. Ye sene a chatis her atin. Seek a das away, a walky aya, a to a guessigu a high. Ah, the eight aya hoti. The inkahunik, a two ye tear for our way, tea yak ye tea at Kester high at the dahaya sehut. Ye awa a hayak ye of sunny. A kawe ye awakahu. Goose another one walk. Ye awa a two wook air dart. Uh, so we're at a and Huna, 
was a Ka Guantan uh, It was wonderful. It was probably about three or four years ago. And they were, you know, as a raven, so as a guest, and they're just giving us all kinds of great things. And uh, this young man came around and he was throwing our food and he was just having fun. He was in fun, he was throwing food, just little bags of chips. But then I, I just went to his uncle and I said, you should tell him um, we don't really throw things at guests at a kui. We just, we just hand them to them. And so, uh, but I didn't want him to have hurt feelings. And he told them, I said, you know, just be nice about it. And, and uh, it was fine. At some point, they were bringing all this food out, and they brought out these king salmon heads, and they had been cut in half, and, they were, and I was really just jamming out on it. And my daughter came up, and they were young, you know, so like they could sit with us for a while. I'd tell them, you know, you should be over there, but come, you could sit. And she said, what are you eating? She was pretty young, she's probably two. And um, I said, ah, shiny. It's a king salmon head. And then I said, do you want to eat some? So she said, yeah. And I started pulling the eye out. She asked what it was. I said, it's, it's eye. Do you want to eat it? And she said, yeah. So I gave it to her and I said, there's a thing like a rock inside. There's a like a little rock inside, but you don't eat it, you just spit that part out. And so she did. And then she said, Gusu another one walk. And I thought that was really <laughs> a nice English sentence. <laughs> so there's a few other things on here. Now it just goes into this list of things. But let's take a break and then we'll take a look at this list and we'll take a look at something else. And if you guys have questions, just ask them because this is it's your last chance. <laughs> uh, anybody got any questions or anything? Thoughts? Mm -hmm. Everybody's okay. I'll keep going. Let me make sure I can see. Okay. So we're going to go through the list a little bit uh, fast, but. My recommendation is just to keep looking for these things, look at some of the pictures, figure out ways that you can sort of incorporate these into what you're talking about. Uh, when, we talk, when I say like independent bases, these don't need to belong to anything, and they usually have to do with these universal things, like up, down, out to sea, to the land types of things. And then you're generally going to see the K sound being associated with going up, the Y sound with going down. And you just K, Y, Ki, Yi, uh, and, and stuff like that. When you see in parentheses, that means sometimes you'll hear that, sometimes you won't. Uh, when we say them here, uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna say them with the D from the beginning. So uh, I'll say them, you guys repeat. The key, the key, the key. The key, 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 the Mm. What do you think? Mm, there's one, it might be at the end, because there's, I was just telling my sister earlier today, I was going through the books and I, I said, usually the first vowel has the tone mark, but that one, the second, at the end. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it might be at the end, the key now. I'm not sure if it was this, uh, and a, mm. Mm. Okay. I'll make a note. I'll look at that one. Okay. The kinde. The kinde. The kinde. The kinde. The ye. The ye. The ye. The ye. The ye na. The ye na. The ye na. The ye na. The yinde. The yinde. The yinde. The yinde. Naki. 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 Ich ki. Ich ki. Ich ki. Ich ki. 
And you'll see some places when there's like a North Island and a South Island, mm -hmm. Na and E is usually how you'll see those. So why would you use the D or not? How, what are, why, why would you use it or not use it? Uh, that's a good question. There's some examples. <laughs> but I'm just sort of talking about it as a place, de key. That's de key and de ye. You'll pretty much always hear those ones. Mm -hmm. Like de kind. <laughs> when I talk about going upwards, I'm usually going to hear kinde and yinde. I'm usually not going to hear the D on there. Kinde. Kinde yinde. It's cool. Right. If I'm saying downstairs, I'll usually say de yina. Yina. I don't know. Just keep an eye out for me. I don't have a good answer for it. Well, so I mean, you're telling somebody to go downstairs. Would you say de yina? Goose, you know, a gay or I'm I'd say hit de ye na de na go. Hit na go. Hit de ye na de na go. Not hit ye na de ya go. De na go. Doesn't sound uh, like that. If we're standing at the stairs, I could say yin de na go. Go down. Ah. Kin de na go. Go up. Okay. Hmm. Or I could say ke go. Ye go. Those are other ways. Okay. <laughs> Dark, 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 a key, a key, a key, a key, yun, 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 the ya, 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 these ones might be probably different in Tuslin. Like how? I think it I think was right. I can't remember what left was. I thought Kliya was other the other. Kliya? Yeah, the first one up there. Yeah, that's uh, further over like Diya. Like so if you say um Diya nach is the other side of like a body of water, especially. Like you say, Qiyi diya nach, go across the bay. Qiyya is sort of uh, further over. The so it's like Qiyya yaki, uh, the other day? Yeah, yeah, uh -huh. it, it, it is used like that in Qiyya mm. talk. And it's probably yeah. the same thing. Okay. Qiyya talk would be the other year. Mm. Uh, that's a good one. Yeah. Okay. So then here's some common uh, bases. So these ones, there's going to have to be a noun in front of them. But we're just going to say them without. Well, I guess we'll use a. Uh. We'll just say a uh in front of it. And so that means it. About it. Around it. A da. A da. A da. A da. A da. A da. A da ka, a da ka, a e te, a e te, a e te, a e te. I'm going to put a suffix on this one. A gate, a gate, a gate, a gate. A gate. A gate. A it, oh. So e te is like, like a footprint, so just e te. 
Uh, I mean, it says imprint. I don't understand. Itih is what remains when it's gone. Uh -huh. so, th this, so what is an imprint? This has to have another. Yeah. The remains of something. So, so uh, print. Us itih. Uh -huh. so, That's. Okay. You know, there was a foot there, but I could see. Okay, it. but now we can see the footprint. It's, it's really like the remains. Sit e where the glacier was. Atcha e crumbs, because there used to be food there. Gun e uh, a charred spot in the land where somebody built a fire, because the fire was there. One of our berry picking places in Huna is Keshish e Yeah. Used to be a bunch of Keshish there, and then they cut them down. Uh, yeah, yeah, like so where the and so it could be where it used to be or the remains of that thing, however you want to look at it. And then um, there it could also work as the following. So you could say a e te kutang the next summer. And so that's how you'd say next summer. A e te kutan. And then you could say ha e te kaku. The people in our remains would be our descendants. It could also be used like, uh, let's say I, I am the teacher and uh, I was traveling or sick or something, and somebody came and they'd say, uh, I'm standing in the place of Khone. And, and it's not like, He's gone forever. It's just like, oh yeah, he was here, but now I'm now I'm here. And you're gonna see that as it a lot to like say, I'm gonna, we're gonna follow them. follow me. This one was you're gonna see it as nya or yina, it depends. Uh, we'll use this one. Well, hmm. let's do. Anya, 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 Anya. This is the one you see like in Nanya Ayi, Henya Kwan, Sanya Kwan. This is that one right there. It means like in the direction of, near that thing. It also means one that's nearby. So in the Raven story, sometimes he'll go to a house and say, Yisitineke we konetru. Have you guys seen the alien's nose? Because they pulled his nose off and he was looking for it. And they'd say, sometimes they'd say, Kaik niya hitkana ak. Try that next house over. And sometimes they'll say, Kida. Kida also means next door. Asha. 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 Asha ki. Asha ki. Asha ki. Asha ki. That's the one we were, we were talking about this. Yeah. Uh, right before class started. Sha shaki awechosatin. He slate. I saw new snow on the mountain. A shu. A shu. A shu. A shu. A shuka. A shuka. A talk. A talk. A talk. A talk. So now when you're speaking, you're going to say, like, in the thing. You're just going to have to think about how is it in there. A uh, tu, it's closed in there. A mm. yik, it's in this really shallow thing. A mm -hmm. it's sitting on it. It mm -hmm. most boxes and stuff. A talk, mm. a body of water, or some sort of, uh, most of this can be body of water. Right? But is it like in the bottom of a box, perhaps? Not usually. Okay. The bottom of a box would usually be ka, unless the box is specifically closed, and it might be tu. Right. Atayi. 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 
She says, uh, and she so some it's it's and so you might get some variation. It's not always going to be the same. A two one. A two one. A two one. A two one. A two. A two. A two. And that is the same tuk for like a butt. And so there's going to be a lot of things. Uh, that's one for the day sleen folks. You'd say a tok. They have this o oh sound that pops up. And this is one spot. But it could be like the bottom of, a, that would be the bottom of the cup or a basket would still be tuk. It could be funny though. A tok. A tok. A tok. A tok. So this area where we're at, ah or ak is the important landmark there. Then you have ak ak, and you'll have some things that are upland from the little lake. Ak 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 sit is the name of the Mendenhall Glacier. And when you learn this stuff and you look at place names, you'll see a bunch of this stuff in place names. It just stacks up like that. And so when they say back inland from, that means upland from, towards the mountains behind, right? And that's, that's an important distinction for Shinget people, because you could just generally say behind something, but then you can also say upland from it, right? And that's what this one is. And then beside, a talk. A talk. A talk. A talk. And sometimes these can stack, right? So what I was told is some people built a house in Ktu'a and they were called Ch'uknach Adi and maybe there was another variation and then they built a house right next to it and it was called T'ak Dain Hit and then you have T'ak Dain Hit Tan which contracts to T'ak Dain Tan. Uh, so that is how sometimes those things work when you have a clan name, you're a lot of times going to have um, something at, which will become adi, the things of that. And it refers to a place. There was a, there was a place, I don't know where it is, called dak kshel. And when you have dak kshel at i, you get dak kshawidi. And there's a place called kshukach. So there's a couple things to know in clan names is when you hear nach in there, that's usually a little like narrow fjord. So there's a place called Kluk Nach, uh, Koho Bay, I guess it's called like a fjord or something. Sik Nach is uh, Black Bear Bay, and then Sik Nach Adi, Kluk Nach Adi, and that's where those clan names are going to come from. And then if that clan builds a house, and then that group becomes kind of its own clan, they are something hit ton. And it's very common for the hit to just contract. Kawagani hit ton becomes kagwan ton. Deshu hit ton, deshi ton. Ishka hit ton, ishki ton. And that's just sort of uh, something that we see in the names of clans a lot. Okay. So behind, a, 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 a. a. Uh, out on the ocean side. Oh, I forgot the a. Teka. 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 There's an island called she. She. Teka. She. Teka. That's the name for Sitka. There's also a place named called Sitka on the glacier. There's also a place named called Sitka on the gully. That's the name for both Petersburg and for the Gastineau Channel. Uh, a one. A one. A one. A one. A wakshiyi. A wakshi yi. A wakshi yi. And you'll see this one used with certain verbs for like, it happened in front of the people. We brought it in front of the people. They, they brought it where I could see it. That's where you're going to see 
this one used. Wakshi'i, that's in Atafzakti, there before my eyes. Right, yes, yeah. Wakshi'i kaya, right in front, right where I could see it. I got a few more. A what? A what? A what? A what? This one is like the uh, the mouth of especially heen. What? The mouth of the river. Ah, uh, uh, what is the mouth of the the lake? So usually where it's gonna sort of empty. And the opposite side would be a um, shark. The head of it. The mouth. You know, bodies of water. On. This one in it, this one means to like to go visit people as well. So whenever you say uh, something like I'm going to go visit my auntie. I'm going to go be by her, see her. This is the one you use to say uh, to come near or to go see or to be with type of thing. And it's related to sikhan, right? Becomes a verb root for loving. There's also khana, the one that I'm next to, and that's like a spouse or significant other. Achu. 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 Achak. 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 Okay. Uh, so these ones are different because they generally don't take a suffix. That last list can take a suffix. De, dach, nach, the T one. A dot. A dot. A dot. A dot. A good. A good. A good. A good. Janak, a janak, a janak, a jis, a jis, a jis, a kah, a kah, a kah, a kah. So jis is usually like a gift, giving, or for the benefit of. A kah is a little bit more, I guess, kind of abstract. Not like really like. Something presented to, but sort of like, um, a kahonai shakao, fight for it. A kin, a kin, a kin, a And the opposite of that is yanach, so greater than, less than. And there's different ways those can be used. Um, like someone says, kun gao saya, and you said, I might say, I think it's less than that. Okay, I think it's earlier. That's to leave it behind. Right? And that could be associated with abandoning, things like that. Um, but it could also be like uh, if you're talking to somebody and you want them to uh, overcome some of their things, like maybe grief or hardships. In the right context, you might say, anaknaku, leave it behind. Don't drag it around. Ashagun, 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 ashagun. And then there's some of these you're going to see, like once we put ha in front of it, it becomes this huge concept. Ha shuka. Ha shagun, right? But on its own, a shagun could just be the components or the history of this cup or whatever. A shu wu, a shu wu, a shu wu, and that's half, but that's usually half of something that can be divided, right? Like half of fill it halfway is going to be a different. It's katut, a different concept, uh, but it's a similar type of word. Atuka, 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 atuka. And we're saying ah for all of these, but they could be du, i, yi, hastu, achla, achais, 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 yanach, 
Ayanach. 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 And that Yanach, uh, there's other things you can build based off of that. Like you could say, Achchi Yanachaway Ishadash. You're too heavy for me to pick up. So more than my hands, you are heavy. But it doesn't mean you're heavier than my hands. But putting that jih like too much for my hands, right? How would you use the to eat thing as a so this, part of a noun? Uh, yeah, so this would be, um, I could say, yis ayah yata. I'm going to give you this button. Uh, but I might say, ich es ayah, this is for you to eat. Right. Um, I'm going to make some food for my kids to eat. So it's what this is. Uh, so there's this yes right here for the benefit of or mm -hmm. to, to gift, uh, to, to help out. And you can put that on to yes. Same like a g yes for your possession, for your mouth. Right, and so ches is for something to eat. Ya yeish ches aya, we french fries, a kachaya kakwasus. I'm going to drop these french fries so the ravens can eat it. Could you say the ravens one again, the sentence? We yeish, a yeish ches. Yeah, oh, let's just say. We yeish ches, we french fries, kakwanak, yach. I'm going to drop these french fries here for ravens to eat. Ah, mm -hmm. So this, it, case, and that could just, uh, and there could be some other verb that talks about what you're doing, but then that's or blank to eat. Okay. Ayach. 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 So this one, uh, even though we just said ayach, so there's like, um, Ach yach yeti, that, that one's like me, right? This is the same one you'd use for all the colors. Oh, yeah. Ach yach yeti, it's like a blue jay, right? But when you say ayach as one word, it means correct. So there, there's, there's sort of uh, two different types of words. That's how I think about them. But just blank yach. Uh, like there was a story and let's say, just do yach yeti yisha. Just the women who were like her uh, would go near her, and that it was the women of the same clan. Is what they were talking about. A yes. A yes. A yes. So now the empty base, and again, like this is lots of lists. The idea is to show you some, these are the most common things, there are more of them. But one of the activities is just sort of building your lists of what these types of things are. What I recommend is looking at place names. You'll see a bunch of these things in there. You'll see some new ones. Look at stories, and you'll start to see these things pop up, right? And like, and we'll just think about them. Shagun. Ach Shagun is my lineage. Ha Shagun is our ancestors. So these ones pop up sometimes before certain verbs, right? Ach e, i e, du e, ha e, ye e, hast du e, ach ka e, ish e. What the squiggle is on there for is to say, you, know, it, you could put a suffix on there. De, dach, nach, and t are very common, right? So here's some, and then these are just, Possessive pronouns. Ach, e, du. Ha, ye, has, du. You can also substitute a noun, right? Uh, but usually it's going to be a kinship term. Okay. So, oh, towards me. Ach, e, de. Ach, e, de. E, e, de. E, de. Du, e, de. Du, e, de. Ha, e, de. Ha, e, de. Ye, e, de. E day. Has to e day. Has to e day. Ach e day. e day. Ach ish e day. So when you have a verb like um, a kawanik to tell somebody, 
right? When you put that into the future, you're going to use day, right? I'm going to tell you. Or what I'll tell my kids sometimes. I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> and then uh, this one for helping, right? 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 Ach eat. Ach eat. E eat. E eat. Do eat. Do eat. Ha eat. Ha eat. E eat. E eat. Has to eat. Has to eat. Ach ta eat. Ach ta eat. E ish eat. E ish eat. Ah, and so this one, when you're going to put the verb into a repetitive thing, now you're going to use ich, like ach ich de nooch. That one always helps me. Right. So you're going to have nooch in it or the ch ending. Uh, it's something that happens repeatedly. And so we see how these suffixes are working, both in terms of like to be located somewhere and for like time and sequence type of thing. Ach ich. Ach ich. I ich, I ich, du ich, du ich, ha ich, ha ich, i ich, i ich, has du ich, has du ich, ach ta ich, ach ta ich, i ich ich, i ich ich. And then with, right? And so this is one, uh, and depending on the verb, right? So this is one like telling someone, uh, giving them information. I told you, right? This is why they tell they told us stories, right? Hastuin, Hastuin, Achtaein, Achtaein, So there's a command form of a verb, kananik, to tell, right? You're you're commanding someone to tell, right? To tell information, right? Like I might say, Ita, Ita in kananik, and uaneha at chai. Go tell your mother the food is ready, right? So, ach in, ach in kananik, tell me. Now, you wouldn't say it in kananik because it doesn't make sense. Right? Tell you. Right? <laughs> tell him or her. Right? Do in kananik and chish. Tell him thank you. Right? Ha in, ye in, has to in. The last one is some of these will contract sometimes. Right? So, with it, Sometimes you'll hear a'in, sometimes you'll hear on, and it's context, whether you know whether that's land or with it. Khan, khat, kun, han, dun, you don't really hear. I think old people a long time ago maybe said that one. Han, pretty rare, kun, uh, I don't think, I don't know if you hear this one as much in the interior, but you'll hear ku uh, a that comes from ka i. But sometimes you'll just, it'll just say ka i. Okay. Thoughts, questions? There's a bunch of big lists. Yes. <laughs> so I think Thursday we'll look at the future. How to put a future verb together. And then that'll be, and we'll just sort of, and we'll wrap up with that. But I want to give you some tools on how to put that together and also show you how do you review this stuff because we go over a bunch of stuff, but it's kind of hopefully your mission to just keep finding ways to put this stuff into your mind. Because part of it is filling those boxes, but the other part is putting those things to use and also seeing how they're used. There are some of the some verbs that really like to have these ones. The helping, teaching. Uh, so you could say, uh, when we go up to the day one, I'm going to teach the kids 
this song, right? Hastu i de kakwasatu ya shi. So I'm going to teach them this song. Ya at shi. Maybe you'll see that. Okay, thoughts, questions? Feeling full? <laughs> So if we forgot what ide meant, could we look up ide? If we saw it in a story or something and we mm -hmm. forgot exactly what it meant, we would be able to find that in the dictionary as an independent entry. word entry. Uh, in the dictionary. Okay. You just say yes. <laughs> I believe you. <laughs> Might pop up a bunch of times. Yeah, it's going to be there. Uh, okay. towards me. So, yes. I just had to confirm. And then there's. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff that's that's being added to this thing all the time. Like, um, desechen is a really neat one. It means to trade. Uh, and it's not really, it's not a verb, uh, but it has to do with um, desech on its own is like beyond my reach. So I could say like, ach desech eyeti we kayakajet. I can't reach that that chair, but whoosh to say, and it, it's I'm still figuring out how it works. You could say whoosh to say in a handling verb, like if you had an empty cup and I had an empty cup, I could say whoosh to say kachtutan. We're gonna trade cups, uh, or I'd say ito agesiku whoosh to say in hakuchai. Do you want to trade cups? Why wouldn't it be a verb? I don't know. It's a verb? To me, it is. <laughs> I, yes, that's, that's a really good point. Because you could say, you could say, ha, wish to say, and that's just saying, let's trade. let's trade. But it doesn't, it's not technically a verb. I don't know why. Because trading is such a clinket thing. said it's thing. not a verb. <laughs> it doesn't look like a verb. It doesn't have tenses. Or well, there's always exceptions. Right? And, and so there are these things that are really interesting that they, they, they work in these certain ways, but they, we just have to learn how to use them with other things. Because you could pair that with a verb. As you, and you can also say, uh, like let's say, um, was sitting there and I was sitting here. I'd say, ach tu asagu wush to say kach tu ki. I want us to trade seats, and that the say would still work for that. So it's a really and the, the fun thing with Clinket is you're never going to run out of questions <laughs> in your life. You're just going to find more things, and it's going to be really fun. And and so the Raven stories started showing us that, or showing me that, and then I just started um, asking people about it, trading. Oh, three minus one equals two. I would, uh, we'll look at the math book a little bit maybe on Thursday. There is a math book out there. I would say, We'll look at that. <laughs> must be out of answers. <laughs> I don't math good. <laughs> But yeah, there, there are some of those, and we're trying to figure out like multiplication and divide and stuff, so that's going to be fun stuff. Okay. Finish cheese, Johan. Okay. Finish cheese. Ah. Ah. Ah.